Hello and welcome to the Rusty Knots. Now let's talk wheels. Wheels on my 1976 MG Midget are pretty awful Mini Light replicas. Now Mini Lights look great on certain vehicles, uh, but in my opinion they don't suit the MG Midget. Um, and I've always been a fan of the original Rostyle wheels. Now the Rostyle wheels seem to be going up a little bit in value at the minute. Um, and because of that, they're really expensive to buy in great nick. So I considered, as the MG is a bit of a project at the minute, um, it's got various bodywork bits being done to it, I thought, why not make the wheels a bit of a project as well? So scoured the old tinter web, uh, and I found a few pretty ropey, um, nasty Rostyles that were cheap as chips and uh, needed some work. So I thought to myself, cheap I like because I'm a northerner. So I bought these wheels. They cost me 50 quid. Um, I've got four of them. So I will be after a fifth for the spare later, but I'm going to concentrate on the four for now. Now, this video is going to be a bit of a journey about how I turned them from this into this. So come along with me and I'll show you how it's done. Right, okay. First part of the process is you have to remove the loose rust. As you can see here, hopefully, it is quite bad. These are particularly ropey rust tiles left out in the rain, but there's no holes. They're all structurally fine. It's just a lot of surface rust that I've got to remove. There's a bit of pitting on the inside <coughs> where the tire bead sits up against the edge of the wheel. You see just here there's uh, quite a bit of um, pitting just here so you sand it back get it clean and then use a little bit of filler to fill in the holes um, not much just enough to smooth it out because it's not essential that you do that but it's nice to get a decent lead so first 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 of all let's get this surface rust off and go from there Okay, so remember the aim of the game for that is just literally to remove the surface rust, which is what we've done. Um, we want to remove the loose stuff rather than trying to attack it down to bare metal. What I'm going to do with the wheel now is I'm going to coat it in a rust converter. Right, so the rust converter stuff is really easy. Um, there's lots of brands on the market. I'm using Hammerite because I've got it. That's the wheel covered now in uh, Cure Rust. As you can see, it's starting to go a, a slight blue black colour. Once it dries out and it's done its conversion, it will go completely black, um, which is good because you can see whether you've missed any. Uh, and then once it's gone black, we can sand it back uh, and then ready to uh, apply some paint. So we'll leave that overnight now and we'll come back to it tomorrow. So this has been left overnight. As you can see, it's now turned to this like black color. That's it done its job. It's converted the rust into like a usable metal, I suppose is the best way of describing it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, flapper wheel, uh, like this one just here. Um, but we just need to try and flap this off now, uh, get the loose rust off, get it nice and smooth, and then we've got a bit of filling to do because there's quite a bit of pitting on this one. So let's go. Okay, so we sanded it back. We've got the worst of the rough stuff off it. It's quite relatively smooth now. Um, 
but you don't want to get it perfectly smooth because that's the last stage where you use sandpaper to get it down to a smooth finish before you put in your, your paint on. So we're going to fill it now. Uh, you might be able to see just here along the rim there's lots of pitting in this one. Uh, this is by far the worst of them all. So we're going to see if we can get a decent finish out of it. Uh, so we're going to mix up some filler now. Um, I fought long and hard to find the world's smallest screwdriver to open this. Uh, so now I've won that battle of finding the smallest screwdriver in the world. Um, we can uh, we can mix up some uh, some filler. Highly recommend one of these. This is probably one of the best purchases I've made, and it was also the cheapest. It cost me a fiver, and it's just a mixing board. Um, granted, some of you will have seen these before. For those that you, of you that haven't, uh, it's just bits of card basically that you can tear off once you're done. Uh, it used to be in the trade. It used to be known as an onion board, I believe. So. Um, because it's got layers. So we're just going to mix up a little bit of filler now. It's quite cold out here tonight, so um, I'm going to put the tiniest bit of uh, hardener because you don't need much with this filler. Um, not endorsed or sponsored by them in any way, but that's what I use got it from the car show it's absolutely brilliant um, by far the best filler I've ever used uh, you use the tiniest amount of hardener with it and it it just it's, it's brilliant um, other hardeners and fillers are available however this is the stuff I like so mix it up you want it so that you can't see any of that pink anymore. I'm not going to teach you all to suck eggs on how to mix filler. You don't want to be sucking eggs while mixing filler. That would be daft. So get it all nice and mixed up. And then it just gets really messy uh, where I apply it. So I'll stick you on time lapse for applying it because otherwise it's going to get very, very boring. All right, that's the filler on. Um, and the great thing about these, that's why everybody should have one in the garage. If you're doing a lot of body work. Fresh one, start again, brilliant. Okay, I appreciate it looks rougher than a plastic surgeon's waiting room currently, um, but that's kind of the process. Okay, right, that's had overnight now to cure, so the filler is now set and ready to sand. So now we have the mind-numbing part of the sanding job. It is really boring. Um, so I'll try and spare you the boredom by doing a fairly high speed time lapse. Uh, but let's get to it. Two hours later. Okay guys, right, that is the filler all sanded back um, as much as I can at the minute. What we're gonna do now is uh, we're going to put a coat of primer on it um, this should highlight the troubled areas give us an idea of where the highs and lows are sand it back and then get another coat of primer on so here we go primering does not have to be perfect because it's likely to be sanded back off again all right that's a light mist coat we'll give it uh, five minutes or so and then get another coat on there. Uh, once I've got a couple of coats on there I'll come back to you. Okay that's uh, three coats of primer, um, two light coats, one fairly heavy coat. 
this is literally just a guide coat so we can see where the highs and lows are like I say actually it's not that bad there's only a couple of bits that um, were showing up uh, I don't think you'll see you might be able to see them on camera just here if I get out the light and a little bit around here so uh, bits and bobs around here so once it's dried what we'll do is go over it with a finer grade sandpaper get it nice and smooth then go over again with another um, primer coat uh, and hopefully at that point it will be smooth enough uh, and ready for paint and what we'll do then is we'll flip the wheel over paint the uh, primer the back of it and the middle of it let that cure and switch it back over again to do the front that way we don't damage the front um, accidentally right then back with the wheel um, it's had overnight to dry the filler's now dried the primer's now dried so it's time to get a little bit of colour on this and see what we can do to make it look uh, shiny and nice uh, the paint can is currently warming in some warm water because it's technically it's a little bit too cold out here to do some spraying um, but I think we'll be all right as long as we leave it to, to cure properly um, so I'm going to shove a mask on um, and uh, get some spraying done Okay, so literally the first coat is just a mist coat. I've gone quite heavy on the side walls, you know, where the, the in, inner of the wheel. Because it doesn't really matter. Um, and the prime has been scuffed up on that part anyway, so I could go quite, quite heavy on that bit. So I've done a very light mist coat on the um, front of the wheel. I'm going to give that sort of five minutes just to tack off. And then we'll go on with a with a slightly heavier coat again for five to ten minutes and another coat and uh, see how it goes right then you might not be able to hear me because i've got my mask on now but uh, i've had a, uh, about five minutes to just set off a little bit so now we'll go on with a slightly heavier coat Right, leave that for a few minutes. Uh, it's really important with these pretty crappy Alfred's rattle cans. It's uh, important that you keep shaping them between sprays. Um, the closest match I could get to the original BMC colour was this Astro Silver. It's what was recommended to me. Right, for the coat time. So now we put another coat of uh, paint on. I'm not too bothered about these bits here because they're going to be painted black. So what I need to do is let the paint cure completely. Then uh, we'll mask it up um, the areas that we don't want painting black. And then I'll key these areas back again. So these little lumps and bumps we, we can get rid of um, through the layers of paint. So you'll not see any of those anyway when the black is on it. So we're just concentrating on the main bits of the wheel that are going to be silver, which is all taken really nicely. So um, that's a bonus indeed. Okay, so the wheels had uh, 48 hours now to dry uh, and cure, so the paint is nice and solid so next stage is masking it all oh joy Right then, so all masked up. Um, just got to make sure that when we do mask up, we make sure that all of the parts are covered, that you don't want the paint to go on, obviously. Um, 
because spray paint does tend to get everywhere. So the key is very, very light coat first, and this um, should create a barrier around the edges of your masking tape so that when you go on with your heavier coats, it doesn't bleed under the masking tape. <coughs> That's the plan. So let's get on. <coughs> right, so we'll give that uh, five minutes just to tack off and then uh, we'll go on for another coat. Now we're just going to keep building up coats like that. Um, so it's uh, obviously the principle is exactly the same. Lots of light coats until you've got the finish that you want. So I'm not going to bore you with every single coat. Um, just uh, I'll bring you back once it's got all the coats on it. Right, okay, that's all the coats on now. Um, now it's quite important that we get the tape off as quickly as we can without damaging the paint. So we're going to give it uh, just a couple of minutes just to tack off a little bit and then we'll get the uh, tape off and hopefully we haven't got any bleeds. Um, you try everything with masking, it's a bit of a risk to be honest. You can get the templates for these wheels and the MGB and the MGB GT wheels um, which are 14 inch, these are 13s. You can get the templates for them which makes it a lot easier. Um, but they're 18 quid each and you have to have one for each wheel to do it realistically. I chose to do the uh, the tape way because I'm not after a concourse finish, I just, just want them to look nice, you know. So let's uh, give it a second and then we'll get this tape off. Right, so that's the tape off then you might have noticed that um, uh, a bit of the tape that I had a bit of damp paint on it and I managed to catch it on the edge of the wheel um, leaving a black mark and you'll see that I was trying to clean it off you can see it's gone now all I did was I used a very fine bit of wet and dry wet it sanded it back and all it did was take the black away left the silver underneath so when we go over it with a lacquer you'll never know so we're lucky there. Um, we've got no bleed, which is good. Um, it's come out well. Uh, so the next stage is we've got to let that dry off and cure properly. Once that's cured, it's time for the lacquer. And then once the lacquer's on, uh, that'll be the job done. So um, great success. Okay, let's get some lacquer on it. Right, there we go. Job done. That's just got to uh, cure off now. And uh, I'll give it a good 24 hours or so. Um, and then that's the job done. Now guys, just remember that these aren't perfect. These are done on purpose for as little money as possible. I've, I've done it in my garage, which isn't a perfect condition. You know, it's, it's not dust free or anything like that. So, you know, please don't look at these and, and think that they're going to be perfect because they're not. The way to do it properly is would be, would be to take them and get them sandblasted. Uh, get the surface nice and smooth and then you, you've got a nice fresh smooth surface to get the paint on I didn't have that luxury I don't have a sandblaster um, and I don't have the time to be able to take them and get them um, sandblasted plus it's a it's an it's a lot of money you know by the time I've got them sandblasted and messed around with that I could have bought refurbished wheels so this is the this was purely done for um, aesthetics on the car make it look as original as possible um, and give it a, f a fresh lease of life. So 
once the um the car goes for a nut and bolt re restoration in the future then i'll look at getting them shot blasted and so on and so forth but the whole idea now is to be able to enjoy the car as it is so i hope you enjoyed this little video of um me tinkering around in the garage getting them nice and shiny again um please remember to like and subscribe the video uh, that would be great um we trying to grow the channel as, as much as we can so any subscriptions will be welcome and, and leave us a comment um, it's always interesting to read comments um, and we'll see you in the next one